Hey, I am back. All right, so I've had a few people ask me how I did the physics on the shiny ball and how it's getting kind of pulled through the, the holes. Uh, so uh, this is the video and kind of my thought process. I am narrating over it, so here we go. Okay, so add a bezier circle and just leave it the way it is. We're gonna add a just a cylinder, you know. You wanna shift Z when you scale it, after you scale it, so it, it avoids scaling it on the Z axis, um, and it just kinda shrinks it. You can do that with X and Y too. If you just shift and click the one you don't want it to scale on, it'll do that. So, and I'm just moving it up. I'm just trying to make things look kinda nice here. We're gonna go into the edit mode. Um, all we're gonna do is we're gonna add a bunch of uh, cuts along the uh, z-axis of it because it's, it is gonna stretch as you pull it around the uh, the zero circle. Exit edit mode. Go into your modifier for this cylinder. Go to curve. Select the axis that works. It's gonna be negative z or whatever. And then since in edit mode it still sees it as going up and down on the z-axis, you're wanna you're gonna wanna scale it on the Z axis to pull it around. I remember screwing up here. I forgot to remove the faces um, on both ends. I love when they connect. Um, so when you go to smooth, it's gonna do this. There's two ways to solve this. You can either just delete the faces like I'm doing here, or you can go into your object settings, your normals, and then do auto smooth. And you can set auto smooth to um, under 90 degrees, so anything that's a 90 degree corner will just not auto smooth. Anything that's under 90 degrees will auto smooth. Connects again, awesome. And so yeah, now you have it going around the thing, which means that now when you go into your rotation of the object, um, open up the timeline, you need to set your keyframes for it. It's going to rotate on Z. Remember, in edit mode, it's still on the Z axis, so you need to rotate it on the Z axis for it to rotate in on itself, and that goes for any of the objects, uh, you, you know, cubes, anything like that. Um, so yeah, you just set up how many times you want it to spin during the duration of your, you know, video, and uh, yeah, that's how that part's done. I'm not going to go too much into the texturing part of this. Just your kind of generic, you know, I have been really digging the Musgrave texture. So you just plug that into the height of a bump map and then you put the bump, the normal out into the normal of the BSDF that you're using. Uh, it's the UVs that have been really kicking my ass. Um, I don't know. I just haven't spent enough time on them. I don't feel confident talking about them too much. The solution was that instead of stretching it out and in my mind, fitting it to the grid, the solution was to shrink it down. It avoids it stretching around the loop and you just get kind of a, it's just better. And it's the correct way, I have no idea. Um, simple displacement, um, the normal out from the Musgrave into the normal of the displacements, you know, it, it's all just testing, right? I found that the bump normal out into the normal of the, uh, of the, displacement node into the displacement out didn't really work for me so I ended up just going from the Musgrave texture out directly to the displacement which gave it I don't know just some really cool like feathery kind of jaggy yeah that anyway uh, I didn't actually go with that on the as you saw in the beginning and the end here when I play it again uh, uh, I didn't go with that just because uh, I, I, <laughs> I don't know. I didn't want it. Okay, so we're gonna go and build the scene a little bit more. Add a plane, uh, something for the ball to eventually land on. One of the plugins you can get or add-ons is a round cube. I like that. I'm adding a couple different to kind of show you. Okay, one is a square or a cube, <laughs> and uh, the other one is a UV sphere. If you subdivide the square, um, you get something that's pretty close to the round cube from the add-on. The add-on's already inside of the thing inside of the preferences so you can just go enable it it gets pretty close when you subdivide a cube i don't exactly know what the difference is between them but when you smooth them the round sphere is is more round 
um, than the cube. The cube still has kind of the, uh, you can sense that it wasn't originally a sphere. I don't like the UV sphere um, just because the top and bottom have the triangles and it can become issues when you're putting physics on it. Even though it looks incredibly round, sometimes it's just not the best option for a round object, topology wise. You can see on the top there, it's pretty horrible looking. Anyway, so I delete those. I'm sticking with the round cube sphere thing from the add-on. And uh, so that's what we'll go with. So in my scene, everything's going to be coming into contact with the cloth physics. So I am enabling collision on every one of those objects. And I'm just boosting the friction. Uh, it's the friction when the cloth ball connects with the torus it's going to pull it through without any friction it's just going to sit there and just kind of wobble higher friction as it rotates it'll pull it through and squeeze it out the other side okay so the cloth physics are a little tough i went with cloth because my system was just too slow with baking soft body and I could get close enough with cloth. You want to pay attention to how high the pressure is and what the mass is. The tension and the compression and shear, you want to raise those so that it doesn't uh, expand too much when you hit play because with pressure it'll want to expand. And you want to raise the dampening on those as well. There's no perfect number. You just need to find what works in your scene. Every object's going to be different. So spend some extra time raise lower the pressure, raise lower the mass, set the quality steps to where you can kind of visualize it real time so that when you're watching it, you can make the decision, does this look heavy enough when it falls? Does this look realistic? And then change the settings to just, you know, make it work. And that's really about it. That's the whole process. The main thing is just knowing what the buttons do so that you can kind of direct yourself to the solution. Also, it's just knowing the limitations of the computer. Is there a more optimal way you could approach something? That's why I used uh, cloth instead of soft body. I just didn't have the time to wait, you know? Oh, also another cool tip for you. If you bring a camera into your scene and in the viewport you got a good angle and whatnot, just control alt zero on the numpad. It'll take the camera that you've added to the scene that's the active camera and it will kind of place it in the scene for you where the viewport's looking. Makes things a lot quicker. Well, there you go. That's how you make a bouncy ball. Um, go through holes in Blender. And make sure you add some Foley in there to spice that shit up.